Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another episode of Time Warp for you. This is a series where I go over things that have changed or were removed from the game for one reason or another. In this video, I wanted to go over dungeon and raid attuning. Now, this is something that we still do get in the game. In Legion, you had to attune for Karazhan, the Arcway, and the Court of Stars, but what I'll be talking about in this video is a little different, and that's the classic raid attuning. For those unfamiliar with the terminology, attuning, otherwise known as keying, basically means that you have to complete a certain objective or questline to be able to enter a raid or a dungeon. And back then, they were very involved and complicated processes. Nowadays, you complete a very short, usually soloable and easily completable quest chain, but back then it was ridiculous. I mean, just take a look at this. When you need a flowchart to make sense of the attuning process, you know you're in for some serious stuff, so let's get into it. All of what I want to talk about is mainly in vanilla and the Burning Crusade expansion, but since there's so much to talk about, this episode will be vanilla and I'll save BC for the next one. Now, I won't go over every single dungeon or raid, or else this video is going to be 5 hours long. I'll just try to hit the highlights and the ones that I think you'll find the most interesting. Let's start with probably the biggest one for vanilla, and that's the Anixia's Lair attunement for the Alliance side. Anixia's Lair was one of the original raids at release alongside the Molten Core. It's located in the Dustwallow March Zone, and to enter it, you couldn't simply just walk in. For the Alliance, you had to complete a quest chain called the Great Masquerade, which was split up into 4 acts and was 16 quests long. To start it, you had to first go to the High Level Burning Step Zone and get the Dragonkin Menace quest from the Morgan's Vigil Hub. This part wasn't too bad. For this one, you just had to kill an assortment of Black Dragonflight enemies in the zone, and an Elite Black Drake, which required a group. After that, you learn that the Blackrock Orcs are under control of the Black Dragonflight, and you're sent on a series of delivery quests to the Lakeshire Hub and Stormwind to request some help. The Acting King at the time, Bolvar Four Dragon, is reluctant without having indisputable proof, and you're sent to a woman named Lady Prestor who becomes pretty important later on. She basically tells you that you're worrying over nothing and they won't help you. You're sent back to Lakeshire again, and then to the Burning Steps to deliver the bad news, and you learn that you weren't the first one to try to seek help in this matter. The former commander of the Alliance outpost in this zone, Marshal Windsord, gathered a lot of important information, but was ambushed and taken prisoner. A member of his group did escape, however. His name was Ragged John, and he had to go meet him in a cave in the northern part of the zone to find out what happened. He tells you that it was the Dark Iron Dwarves who took him, and that he's being held in the Blackrock Depths. So, you relayed this information back at Morgan's Vigil, and you were sent to go rescue him. The Blackrock Depths was a fairly high level instance, ranging from the low 50s and near 60-ish near the end of the instance, and it was probably the biggest and most confusing dungeon in the game. Remember, there were no dungeon maps back in the day, so even figuring out where to go was a big challenge. There were 21 bosses total, and a full run would take hours to complete, even if you knew what you were doing. This was also back when dungeons were very difficult, and you needed to coordinate crowd control because the elite groups were simply too big for most people. Luckily though for this quest, the prison isn't too far from the entrance. You still had to fight through a small army, but it could have been way worse. You had to go straight to the prison cells, clearing all of the guards, and kill the jail captain to loot a key for the cells. You find Windsor's cell and bring him up to speed with things, but being a prisoner, they took all of his notes, his belongings, and he becomes quite despondent and doesn't want to leave. You then return to Morgan's Vigil outside of the instance, the mountain, and all the way across the zone, and you're basically told to head straight back. Another thing I should bring up at this point was that the traveling in this game took a very long time. There weren't flying mounts or flight whistles or anything like that. Most people had just the 60% speed ground mounts since the 100% speed ones were too expensive, so all of this running took way longer and it was a bigger deal back then. And like it or not, you had to head back and you were just given the vague direction of investigating. And what they meant by that was to kill random guards until you got a quest item called the Crumpled Up Note. This note speaks of two high-ranking dwarves in the dungeon, General Angerforge and the Golem Lord Argelmach. You bring this to Windsor, who is convinced that these two bosses hold most of his notes, and if you get them, it'll be enough proof to finally get the support of Stormwind. Now, this is where you really got lost because these two bosses were fairly deep into the dungeon. I can't really remember if this was required or not, but there was also a keying process for the Blackrock Depths itself that allowed you to open certain doors. Now, I think these just unlock shortcuts and let you do everything faster, but outside of the instance in the suspended rock, there was an NPC that you had to talk to to get a quest for the key. But that wasn't enough. To be able to see or talk to him, he had to be in ghost form. That's right, you had to die first, which honestly, it isn't as cryptic as it seems. You died a lot in that place, and you went through this area with the corpse run, so most people found it pretty easily, in fact. This quest sent you through the beginning area of the dungeon, up over the gladiator arena, and to the right where you had to click on a statue. 
And from that, you got a key that unlocked a bunch of doors. Like I said, I can't remember if this was required to progress in the Anixia chain, or if it was just a shortcut. This allowed you to use the Shadow Forge lock, which gave you a path directly to the Anger Forge boss. And Argolmach was just in the next room after that. You looted the notes and returned them to Windsor to start the most infamous part of the quest, and that's the jailbreak. Windsor is ready to leave, and you have to escort him out. But if you were smart, you didn't actually accept the quest until you fully cleared out the area. Another thing I should point out here is that the escort quests were pretty miserable back then. You had two problems, the person you were escorting walked too slow or too fast. For Jailbreak, it was the latter, and if you started this part without fully clearing the area, he would run into multiple packs, run in before your healers had full mana, and 90% of the time, the group wiped. Winter would of course die, and you would have to reset and re-clear the instance all over to try again. So, it was essential to make sure that no one accepts a quest until the whole ring was cleared and Windsor had a clear path to the exit. And even still, with the way the escort quests worked, only one person could start it and it would share the quest with everyone who's eligible at the time. If just one person in the group didn't turn in the previous part, he would get locked out of that jailbreak for that run and again, you'll have to start all over. But even with all of that, he had one more obstacle which was particularly hilarious and painful. When you were escorting him out, he runs up to the instance portal that zones you out, says a few things to you, and then marks the quest for completion. Another thing that would happen was that people thought they had to go through the portal to escape, and they would do that before the quest completed for them, instantly failing it, and once again, you'd have to start all over for that person. So, lots of ways things could go wrong here, and remember, raids were 40 man back in the day. You had to do this for every single person, which made a lot of guilds just hate this instance. If you were miraculously somehow successful, the follow-up had you gather a full party and meet Windsor and Stormwind. You march into the keep, and Lady Prestor calls for your head for treason. Windsor then presents his information and exposes Prestor as Anixia, the broodmother of the Black Dragonflight, in disguise. You battle each other in the throne room and force her to retreat, but Windsor does get slain in the battle. You then find out that Anixia had given Bolvar an amulet that controlled him. You break that to free him from her control, and you would repair this medallion and finally gain access to her lair. To do this, you had to fly to the other continent across the world and go to the Winter Spring Zone and talk to an NPC named Hala. He tells you that to repair the pendant, you need to get the blood of one of her champions, General Dracoseth, in the Upper Blackrock Spire, a level 60 10-man raid in vanilla. But to gain access to that, guess what you needed? That's right, a key. The Blackrock Spire was also located in Blackrock Mountain near the Blackrock Depths and it was unofficially split up into two parts by the players due to its size, upper and lower. To go to upper you take a left, and to go to lower you take a right. But to gain access to upper, you had to loot an item called the Unadorned Seal of Ascension from the mobs in the instance, and bring that to an NPC in the lower side. He was hidden up on this ledge and only became visible when someone was near him, making him quite cryptic to find. And if you had the Seal of Ascension, he would give you a quest where you have to collect three gems, the Gemstone of the Blood Axe, Smolder Thorn, and Spire Stone. These dropped from three different bosses in the lower Blackrock Spire, and the worst thing about it was that only one person could loot them. So, completing this quest usually required multiple runs unless you just had crazy luck. Upon completing that, you are once again sent across to the other continent to Dustwallow Marsh. There you'll find a drake which you don't kill, but rather mind control using an item you got with the quest. You also got an unpowered seal of ascension as a quest item. You placed this on the ground, and you had to bring down the drake's health until you got a message saying that he's faltering. Once that happens, you mind control the drake, and you use one of his abilities to breathe fire on the amulet to empower it. And once you do all of that, you return to the NPC in the lower Blackrock Spire, and he gives you a blue ring which functions as a key to open the door that leads to the upper Blackrock Spire. Huh, <sighs> okay, I'm gonna calm down. So, now you finally have Axis, and you can clear the upper and loot your blood from Dracosath. This was a pretty challenging place to clear, and it required a good group. Dracoseth was the last boss, and as one final kick in the cojones, he only dropped one blood and only one person could loot it. This was changed to 2-4 to four in a May of 2005 patch, and then finally they came to their senses and just made it drop for everyone later on. From there, you could finally return to Hala in Winter Spring, and he gave you an item called the Drakefire Amulet, which finally allowed you to zone into the Anixia's Lair instance. So, it was quite the journey. Although the quest chain is now removed, to this day it's remembered as one of the most intricate, difficult, long, and convoluted quest chains in the game's history. But like I said, that was just the alliance chain. There's also a horde counterpart. Now I'll try to cover this as best I can, but I was alliance for vanilla so forgive me if I get some of the details wrong. To start that, you had to visit the horde outpost, Kargath, which was located in the Badlands and talk to an NPC called Warlord Gortooth. 
He gives you a quest called the Warlord's Command, which sends you off to the Lord Blackrock Spire, and you had to kill all of the leaders. The High Lord Olmach, Warmaster Voon, and Overlord Wormthalak. You also had to loot some documents, which spawned on the ground in four random locations throughout the dungeon, and up until the September 2005 patch, they despawned after being picked up, so once again, multiple runs. After that, you're sent to Eitrig and Thrall in Orgrimmar, and show them the documents, and you learn that one of the Blackrock orcs there, Rend Blackhand, declares himself as the Warchief. This doesn't really sit well with Thrall, so you're sent there to take him out. Your first of many trips to the Upper Blackrock Spire. And once again, just like the Alliance, the Horde had to go through the keying process to gain access to Upper. After taking him out, you return to Thrall, and he sends you to the Desolus Zone, where you talk to an Orc Hunter, Rexar. He in turn sends you across the world to the Western Plaguelands to talk to a hag named Miranda, and she'll ask you to return to the Upper Blackrock Spire and loot 20 Black Dragon Spawn Eyes so you can disguise yourself as a Black Dragon later on. Once you do that, you're given the disguise and you're sent to the Black Drake Ember Strife in the Dustwalla Marsh Zone, who will give you three quests to kill elite dragons spread throughout the world. One in Tanneris, another in Winter Spring, and another in the Swamp of Sorrows. After you slay all three of them, you got a follow-up quest to kill another drake called Axtraz in the Wetlands in Grim Batal. So, once again, the traveling was legendary back then, and you had to have a lot of patience. After completing that, you're sent back to Rexar in the Desolus, who would send you back to the Blackrock Spire for a fourth time. This time, you need to kill Dracoseth and once again loot his blood, which only dropped for one person for a time. And, upon completing that, you got your Drakefire amulet and you could zone into the Onyxia's lair. There's been a lot of debate on which side had it tougher. Personally, I think it's the alliance with the jailbreak part being the tiebreaker, but maybe that's just my alliance bias talking. So, this was the raid that had the most involved king process. The others were honestly pretty minor in comparison. For the Molten Core, you talk to a High Elf named Lothos Riftwalker outside the path leading to the Blackrock Depths. He'll give you a quest called the Attunement to the Core, which requires you to run through the majority of the Blackrock Depths instance and pick up a rock near the actual Molten Core entrance. Remember, back in the day, a lot of these raids had the actual portals inside of the dungeons. The Molten Core was in the Blackrock Depths, the Blackwing Lair was in the Blackrock Spire, and Nexramus was going to be in Stratholme, but they changed their minds about that. The Blackwing Lair was also pretty simple in comparison. You just had to kill an orc called the Scarshield Quartermaster, located outside the entrance of the Blackrock Spire, and he dropped a quest starter to kill General Dracosath and click an orb behind him. Thankfully, everyone could touch the orb, and that was that. You were attuned to the Blackwing Lair, and from then on, you can use an orb located right outside the Blackrock Spire to zone into the raid. Next, Ramus was pretty simple as well. You just needed Honored with the Argent Dawn faction, and you completed a quest that records some trade materials and money, as if it was like gaining entrance to a theme park. If you were revered, you got a discount, and if you were exalted, they were generous enough to let you save Azeroth for free. And the last vanilla raid was on Kirage, which technically didn't require a tuning unless you count the opening ceremony. This raid had an event where the Horde and Alliance had to work together and gather supplies in a war effort to open the gates. And there was a huge event in Silithus for a short time if you were successful. After that, everyone had access to both the 20 and 40 man raids. It was a pretty huge event in the game's history, and to commemorate it, it's recreated as a mini-event on the 21st of January of each year, the date that the gates were first opened worldwide. So, that's about all I wanted to talk about, I guess. There's a lot more king related to dungeons, but I think they're kind of minor in comparison, and this video is starting to drag on, so I'll just quit while I'm ahead or save it for another video. I hope this video was interesting and informative of how the game used to be like in regards to the keying process. Like I said, I will return to it, I still want to tackle the Burning Crusade raids, which, if you can believe it, are actually more complex. Anyways, I hope you found the video entertaining. Like it if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next episode of Time Warp. Peace.